So here is our setup for our first experiment to find out what temperature yeast would produce the most carbon dioxide. So I've set up the four boiling tubes in each of the different variables. So A is cold water, B is 36 degrees, C is 56 degrees and D is 76 degrees. So first of all, I'm making sure that the right temperature is in each of the beakers. I've put the same amount of yeast in each one. And now what we're going to do is activate each one with the glucose and solution. And then we're going to time five minutes to see which one produces a froth. And we're gonna measure the froth. So I've already got my record sheet ready and I have my timer at hand to time the five minutes. So I'm using a pipette to make sure that each of the boiling tubes has the same amount of solution so it's a fair test. And I'm going to start the five minutes when, once they've all been f filled up. So I'm going to put four pipettes of water in each one of the tubes. Make sure it's it's well mixed and then pop the, the... So now they're all established, I'm going to time the first five minutes. Now, on this area here, I'm going to make notes of what I observe in this five minutes. So I can see that A hasn't properly mixed yet and B, some of the yeast has risen to the top. C, you can see a white area of froth forming and D is starting to see some bubbles as well. So I can write that on my notes. This is our first five minutes, so I have stopped the clock and I'm going to write down the first measurement for five minutes. So A, <laughs> we have a froth of three millimetres. Now those buns have just popped off B because the gas has built up so much. So here's B, 36. So we're measuring from the liquid line. So we have a 20 mil froth on B. And I'm gonna make, replace that in there and make sure that the, um, the bun gets put back on. Um, at every five minute interval, I'm also going to make sure by checking the thermometers that the temperature is what I want it. So this is a 30 mil froth in C. Wowee. And D. My record chart is going to go up. I'd say a two mil froth in D. So now I've got my first set of results. I'm going to start the timer again and time another five minutes. If we look really closely at sample B and sample C, we can see the bubbles being produced and you can see the foam is quite tight in B and quite lively in C. Now, whether this changes the growth lines is something that we will look at at the end. So after 10 minutes, we're going to have a look at them again. So A has gone up to 10 millimetres of foam. B is... Yes. 
is 20. Now, see, the bun has popped off twice. <laughs> and there's B, uh, so I've, I've uh, put on my notes when the buns have popped off, because when they do, um, the froth does drop down, but it does show how active they are. So they B and C have had their buns pop off twice. So this, this foam has dropped to 20. It was 30 originally and it did get a lot higher in my observations. And still with D, the higher one, I'm gonna say one millimeter there. So I'm gonna set the timer again for 15 minutes. So we're at 15 minutes now, so we're gonna repeat the measurements. It's been really difficult to get a uh, down to as low as four degrees, but this is just cold tap water. It, it is being active and it's at 18 millimeters of foam. B. Thirty five thirty five millimeters of foam C the bung popped on C again and the foam reduced so it was a lot higher a minute ago but I have written that on the notes. Um so this has dropped to twenty five mil of foam. And D, I'm maintaining that there's uh, the right temperature on, on D by topping it up. I can say one millimetre. And we're going to restart the clock again. So at 20 minutes, we're now going to take the fourth measurement. Now with A, it's hard to maintain such a cold temperature. It keeps trying to heat up to room temperature. The bun has not popped on it. It's now 18, so 18, still the same amount from the last measurement. B, the bun has popped off again which I've recorded and the foam has dropped to 10. And C. The foam here is quite open, but I'm going to take it up to the highest measurement, which is 30 of the bubbles. And D, oh, <laughs> it scares me every time that. Uh, uh, one. So I'm going to reset the clock for one more recording and then we will conclude. So for the last recording, although I am going to continue the experiment for another couple of minutes, A is 25, looks like a slow and steady one. B, the bone has popped off four times now. See, the buns has popped off, so that was 10. And then 
D is, I'm, I'm not even going to hold the, the ruler up, it's one for sure. So once we have got the data, we're going to plot it on the graph paper that you've taken home with you. And I'm, we're going to use a different colour for each of the results. 